I just wanted to pause it really quickly right here. <laughs> Look how happy Matthew Medina is pulling in that live ring. He is actually loving life right now. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Yes, that's right, we're back with another movie commentary on the channel, and I can't tell you how many of you wanted to see a movie commentary on this film. The film is, of course, 47 meters down. Released back in 2017, it got completely canned by the reviewers and also flopped in the box office. No surprises there, really. Now, I think I should say here, when I was watching the film, there isn't a whole lot of sharky stuff in there, and a lot of it is about diving physiology. Fortunately for you guys at home, I am both a shark scientist and a PADI certified dive master, so I know a little bit about the science of diving. So in today's movie commentary, expect some shark science stuff, but also expect quite a lot of stuff about diving physiology as well, which, of course, they get completely wrong. As always, blood and gore, switch off if you're squeamish, you know the drill. Anyway, it's time to grab your favorite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy this movie commentary of 47 meters down with a real life shark scientist. So we've skipped the first part of the film here where sisters Lisa and Kate met some local blokes on a night out and they've convinced them to go cage diving with great whites. Now, I've never been cage diving with whites before, but you can 100% guarantee if I was going to do it, I'd be doing it through a reputable dive operator and not some shady side street operation. <laughs> you both know how to scuba dive, right? Yeah. yeah. Matthew Medine here with probably the worst dive competency check I have ever seen. <laughs> like with a reputable operator, these guys are gonna be checking your qualification cards, which is like a pretty standard check that they do everywhere. Look, here's mine, just in case any of you didn't believe that I was a paddy dive master. <laughs> Look at the state of that cage. Like, this is the bit where you turn tail and run, guys. This is not legit or safe in any way possible. Like, I think I'm a pretty fearless guy. Fearless enough to want to get into the water with great whites without a cage. But still, this is not a cage that I would be getting into at all. Medine needs a resting. <laughs> okay, so we've got some chum going into the water here, but Kate asks one of the boys whether that's legal or not. There are different rules around the world on baiting and chumming the waters for cage dives, but it is a pretty surefire way to bring the sharks in. They're in Mexico here, and I'm pretty sure the legit operators have codes of conduct they have to like adhere to. I think it is legal to chum and bait the water, but they aren't allowed to tow bait towards the cage, and that's for the safety of both the divers and the sharks. There's also another ethical question here on whether it's right to be provisioning sharks with bait. Provisioning of sharks is a hot topic of research in shark science with varying results. Some have suggested that provisioning can alter the natural behavior of sharks and also alter the surrounding ecosystem as well. But then there are other papers that have shown no noticeable impact on shark behavior and migration, for example. It's a tricky one and it's one that definitely needs more research. So I'm sorry I don't have a definitive answer for you all. My God, Kate. It's about 20 feet. I've seen him get as big as 28. <laughs> okay, not quite right here, Mr. Medine. <laughs> he says that shark is 20 feet long, but he's seen them get as big as 28 feet, and great white sharks definitely do not get that big. There are a few unconfirmed accounts of great whites getting to about 21, maybe 22 feet, but... 28 feet is just ridiculous. I had a go at Quint from Jaws when he suggested that his shark was 25 feet, so Matthew Medine is getting even more of a scolding from me for that blatant over-exaggeration. Underwater, you're in his world. You can hear your heartbeat from up to five miles away. Sketchy first mate fancies himself as a bit of a shark expert here as he tries to scare the shit out of an already petrified Lisa. It is true that sharks can sense heartbeats, although technically it's not that they can hear them, but it's the ampullae of Lorenzini, which are those tiny little pores around the front of the head and the face, that can detect electrical impulses from those heartbeats. And that's how sharks would be normally hunting their prey when it's difficult to see. He says that they can do that from five miles away, which I'm pretty sure isn't right. I don't know if there's an exact number on this one, but it's more likely to be within a radius of a few hundred feet, as opposed to miles and miles away. So, as expected, the dodgy cage wire snaps and Lisa and Kate plummet down to the seabed to a depth of, you guessed it, 47 meters. Now, this is where the dive physiology starts to get a little bit suspect. Both Lisa and Kate here are wearing full face dive masks, so 
I get it for the point of the film because we need to be able to hear them talk, but these masks are real specialist pieces of equipment that are just not supposed to be used by novice divers. So as they plummet down, that full face mask is an internally pressurized system, which means that whatever is inside the mask is protected from the pressures that you would get at depth. We can see here that one of the girls has a bloodied nose, which I'm imagining is supposed to be from that rapid descent, but that wouldn't happen because the mask is already pressurized. The real damage here, however, would have been to their ears. So dropping that quickly to that kind of depth would 100% blow your eardrums out, which is gonna be excruciatingly painful. Like I've had minor issues with my ears before while diving and that was painful enough, let alone perforating your eardrums. Kate decides to leave the cage to try and get radio communication with the boat at the surface and somehow here manages to dodge this incoming shark. She's literally got no fins on either. Like, if that shark wants her there, it's got her. <laughs> There's no way you can outswim a great white shark, especially if you haven't got any fins on. The great white here as well deciding to have a good old chomp on that cage and I guess this is probably the most accurate thing that they've got right about the shark so far. Sharks often like to sense their environment with their mouths and this is a really good way for them to be able to tell what's food and what isn't food. And there are tons of clips online of great white sharks doing exactly this to dive cages. Tiny bar. Okay, so more dive physiology here for you. Kate says that she's got 30 bar left after having started with 200. The issue here is that by this point, they both would have run out of air. And that's because the deeper you are, the more atmospheric pressures are placed on your body and you tend to guzzle up air significantly faster than you would do if you were at a shallower depth. I think someone online who is significantly clever than I am managed to calculate that the girls would last a maximum of 15 minutes at this depth before running out of air. And that's not even taking into account the time they spent before the cage dropped and all that physical exertion they've been doing down there at the bottom. So yeah, this is realistically where the movie ends as they both suffocate from having no air. <laughs> Grim. Lisa here hiding from one of the sharks before it decides to smash through that rock to try and get her. <laughs> Why do we always seem to get these ridiculous rock smashing sharks in these films? Like, sharks don't smash through rocks. They're powerful, but they're not that powerful. <laughs> Also, Lisa managing to now hide from the shark behind another rock, even though those incredibly loud scuba bubbles would easily be giving away her position. Sharks can hear your heartbeat from five miles away, according to that sketchy first mate, but they can't find you hiding behind a rock that's two meters away from them. <sighs> I'm losing the will to live here, guys. <laughs> Do you know what? You clearly know it's coming, but that's actually a half decent jump scare there. It's not quite Ben Gardner from Jaws, but that's up there for me. <laughs> so in the absence of Kate, who's supposedly just been dragged off by one of the sharks, Lisa, who's never dived before, by the way, suddenly becomes an absolute diving veteran here as she seamlessly changes over her scuba tanks seconds before running out of air. <laughs> so yes technically this is possible to do underwater but it is a really dangerous task and those who do this are highly trained experienced divers when you're doing this you massively run the risk of flooding that first stage and just completely contaminating your regulator or in this case that full face mask that she's in it's a serious skill so i'm actually super impressed lisa has miraculously been able to do this Heading towards the climax of the film here as Lisa manages to find Kate, somehow, and they decide to head to the surface of the water with a couple of flares. This is literally what they should have done from the start. Like, Matthew Medina's repeatedly warned them about decompression illness, otherwise known as the bends, which is essentially where nitrogen bubbles form in your blood if you ascend too quickly. But the thing about the bends is that, while yes, it can be dangerous and potentially deadly, it's definitely not as deadly as running out of air from your tanks in a matter of minutes. Medin makes the bend sound like it's some kind of immediate death sentence, which it just isn't. Anyway, after fumbling around with a few flares, the girls managed to get another one lit and... Uh, why are those sharks stationary midwater? Why do the shark films keep doing this? <laughs> Great whites cannot stay motionless in the water. They are one of the shark species that has to continuously move forwards in order to breathe. Also, why were they just sat there mid-water with their mouths open? <laughs> this is rubbish. Medine here also sacks off all of the previous advice that he'd given and tells the girls to swim for the surface, which is 
the exact thing that will give them the bends. <laughs> Come on, Matthew, make up your mind. So the girls make it to the surface only for Lisa to be very quickly thwarted by this great white who has a right good go at chomping down on her leg. Although I just wanted to pause it really quickly right here. <laughs> Look how happy Matthew Medina is pulling in that life ring. He is actually loving life right now, despite the fact that the very people he's trying to save with the life ring are getting completely ravaged by a 20-foot great white shark. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, love. Never change, Matthew Medina. Never change. Lisa and Kate here desperately struggling to get into that boat as the boys don't really help them that much at all. And oh, Lisa gets another chomping from that shark. And that one's surely got to take off her leg, right? Surely. She's got completely the right tactic here though with the gouging of that eye. Like I've said before, this is one of the best places to attack if you're getting attacked by a shark. It's always a safer bet to go for the gills and or the eyes as opposed to the end of the nose because the latter two are further away from the pointy end of the shark. Although saying that, attacking anywhere on the shark is better than doing nothing because sharks don't want to bite something that is fighting them back. End of the film here now as Lisa starts acting a little strangely, seeing that blood kind of drifting upwards and out of her hand and ultimately we get to the major plot twist of the film. Lisa has been imagining everything that's been happening and is in fact still at 47 meters down inside the cage. <laughs> What a twist. It's revealed here that she's actually been under the influence of nitrogen narcosis, which in real life is more equivalent to feeling a little bit giddy, maybe slightly drunk, as opposed to full-blown hallucinations as if you're on some kind of psychedelic drug like Lisa is experiencing here. Nitrogen narcosis is usually brought on by depth, and for me, it used to happen at about 28, 29 meters, and it's easily resolved by just ascending a couple of meters, waiting a little bit, and then coming back down. It is quite a funny experience, though. In the film, I suppose it's somewhat used to explain all the crazy shit that's just happened in the last 15 minutes, and I guess it does explain how Lisa suddenly became an absolute dive professional. <laughs> Lisa here finally getting saved by some rescue divers as they slowly ascend towards the surface. She's looking pretty happy about it really, which is slightly strange considering her sister has literally just died. <laughs> Lisa, you little savage. <laughs> And there we go, folks, that was 47 meters down. Now, I'm gonna try and be fair with my assessment of the film here, and for me, sadly, I really struggled with it. Don't get me wrong, I kinda did like that little plot twist at the end, and it does come as a surprise. But for me, the sharks just weren't really on screen for long enough. Like, I swear they were only on screen for a combined total of like three minutes in an hour and a half film. Okay, so looking at realism scores, the sharks weren't really on screen enough for me to give a really good shark science assessment of it, but I can definitely slate the diving physiology. So sadly, it's gotta be a two out of 10. Then for overall entertainment, I thought it was okay. The plot twist does kind of save it for me, but still it's a pretty lowly four out of 10. That's enough for me then. Importantly, what did you think of the film? Are my ratings too harsh? I think I might be being a little bit too harsh with my ratings, I'm not sure. Anyway, let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Also keep your suggestions coming for movie commentaries. The more times you suggest something, the more likely it is that I'm gonna do it. So post them below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Sharp Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time. <laughs>